the immortal John Hancock here and I'm here today to talk to you about retro collecting and where to start you know there might be many people out there and thinking about getting into this hobby and not knowing where to begin and so this video is to really showcase what I feel is the best place to start a lot of different opinions out there these are just mine a lot of uh, these things uh, depend on a lot many things so I'm 40 and so um, I think the age does uh, determine kind of what you feel are some of the best systems to collect for I've been collecting for you know ov about over 25 years seriously and and so this is what I would start with and so first up got to go with the classic with the 2600 um, there's many different models um, I do a video showcasing how to collect for the 2600 more in detail and I can do a link below um, 2600 has an amazing library the nice thing about collecting for this system is it's not going to break the bank especially for the common stuff and so um, I recommend collecting uh, uh, if you're just starting out really collecting stuff that you're going to try to play um, the other thing too is so many people start collecting what they grew up with and so I grew up with the 2600 um, I really started collecting um, Nintendo and Odyssey 2 and some other things but what I found is that you find a lot of Atari especially at like trade shows retro game stores um, you, you typically find some loose Atari carts loose Atari carts are cheap and, and a lot of times the common games are, are, are really the the, uh, the ones that are best to play. So, anyways, um, there are some alternatives. Uh, there's systems that look like this as well. Um, many different model types and, you know, Sears made their own Atari line. Uh, the other alternative too, and again, I'm really big on backwards compatibility. If you want to spend extra money... You all, the other option is to go with an Atari 7800. Now, Atari 7800 plays most 2600 games, and um, it also has some wonderful homebrews, which the 2600 has as well. So those are some early picks for, for playing some classic stuff. Now, truth be told, if you grew up and you were a little bit younger, Atari may not be your first choice. We can always go with a Nintendo. And you know this is the this is the model two that's more expensive. You can go with the the more common model called the, called the toaster, nicknamed the toaster. Um, but Nintendo has a vast library, and and so um, I totally recommend it for the franchises that really put put Nintendo on the map. You know, Mario, Metroid, Zelda, all represented um, in classic eight bit fashion. It's got an amazing controller. And let's talk. Let's talk about hardware too. The the systems I recommend, uh, I I consider that there's a there's a decent aftermarket, and that means that you can get replacement parts, and 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 there's support out there. If you want to collect these systems, you're going to find these systems. There's going to be parts if you have something broken, easy to fairly easy to fix, or people that can work on them. Nintendo's in this category just because. There is an aftermarket. You get an aftermarket controllers, aftermarket parts to connect to your TV or, or, or power, and and as well as just a, a, va a huge library. So this is an option. The other option, I mean, now it's 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 older brother, the Super Nintendo, also has to be on the list as well. Now some of the games are getting really expensive, and so um, but I can't. You can't deny that the that the quality of the Super Nintendo library is amazing. I mean, there's just over 700 titles in the U.S. and and it, it just has a, such a diverse library, good and bad games, sports titles, action, RPG, and um, a good friend of mine, John Rose. Uh, the reason why he likes Super Nintendo is is you know he broke it down this way: it has a majority of what the Nintendo has with better graphics and sound, and it, and I I can't argue with that, and so. Totally recommend the Super Nintendo. Um, again, there's a huge aftermarket. There's there's homebrews, hacks, reproductions. Um, it is uh, it is a little bit costly now, but uh, there are some classic titles that won't break the bank too much for you. Now, say you want to collect Nintendo and Super Nintendo. There are many clone systems out there. There's many. Um, this is the one I I have still in my collection that I play. I, I bring this to a local gaming club. 
It's the FC Twin. There's many others, but again, if you want to save a little money on hardware, this plays most of the library of Nintendo and Super Nintendo. It doesn't play everything, but again, uh, I think you can get these around 50, 60 bucks still. So that's that's pretty affordable, and you can save money and and collect two systems at the same time. Now, I love Sega. Always have, always will. This is a must, you know, for starting out collecting. Genesis is essentially. Um, I feel the best system that Sega made, and uh, called the Mega Drive overseas. Um, this is uh, an amazing system to collect for. It's a lot cheaper to collect than Super Nintendo. Again, huge aftermarket. Homebrews, hacks, and reproductions are made for it. Wonderful system. I think it's the best Sega made. Um, the nice thing about the Genesis. Now, um, there's better models than the Genesis too. The the thing I like about this is it. It looks nice if you if you want to add additional um, add-on systems to it. The the Model 2 Sega CD, the 32X. This is the model that I play with. Um, it's a little bit smaller too, and the, that's the other thing that I was showcasing today. Um, some of the smaller models are the are the models that are easier to um, um, for space-wise. And so um, I'm showing kind of some of the different models uh, just to say, hey, there's some different models out there of various systems that take up less space. Space is an issue. Um, getting back to the Genesis, uh, there's a power base converter. You can uh, you can play Master System games on it. Um, there's even an aftermarket rever um, a converter now too that doesn't take up so much space. Um, I really like this system. Again, huge library. Um, big fan of it. So, that might not be your thing. Maybe you're more of a portable person. Well, there's two portables I recommend, and it all depends on age and preference. Um, <laughs> if you're going to collect one portable, for me, Game Boy Advance SP. And so this, uh, they made, uh, it's important to know that there's two distinct uh, model variations of, of this system. Now on the back here, it's hard to see. Um, it says AGS 101. If your system says that, you have a better, a brighter screen. And this is a SpongeBob one. I recently got this. Um, pretty awesome little system. But this plays Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance, and it's awesome. And the nice thing is, I love the clam, the the clamshell design. Protects the screen. Awesome. Totally recommend this. Now. Maybe you don't care as much for Game Boy and Game Boy Color because maybe that's too old for you. Well, my next pick would then be a DS Lite. Now, DS Lite is backwards compatible, which I love, and it plays all Game Boy Advance titles, and it plays the huge library, which is the DS, which is, again, an amazing system. So either or is like a solid pick. Um, you can't go wrong. Again, you're going to find this stuff everywhere. If you go to retro game shows, you're going to go to game conventions, you're going to go to uh, retro game stores, they always have a Game Boy or DS, I mean, typically. And so, uh, the other options, too, uh, I, I, you know, I'd be lying to say uh, PlayStation 2. Now, again, this goes back to backwards compatibility. Oh, forgot to mention. Um, Nice thing about Super Nintendo is that they made a, a, a Game Boy, uh, Super Game Boy cart, and you can play uh, Game Boy games on your TV screen. Pretty awesome. So back to PS2. Uh, PS2, I mean, I love backwards compatibility. Plays most PlayStation 1 games. Uh, I think the Slim is an amazing design. Uh, I've had this in my collection for, gosh, um, well over 10 years. Played it. You know, beat the crud out of it. Um, huge library, very diverse, RPG, racing, sim, strategy, um, and had it um, on top of playing, you know, the huge library of PlayStation 1. Um, I think at aftermarket, there's tons of aftermarket parts, and these are fairly inexpensive, you know. The games are really cheap, too, uh, you know, for the most part. I mean, you get into more RPG territory, you're going you're gonna to pay a lot more, an obscure title, but, but I love... I absolutely love uh, collecting for the PS2. Have a have a huge library of it. Um, in the future, I'm going to be showcasing my 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 uh, PS 
PlayStation like collecting videos. That's next up after all of my Sega videos. So totally recommend that. Now, now we can talk about the systems in which uh, are cheating a little bit. And you know, uh, there's some there's some definite opinions about um, the Retro Freak and the Retron Five. And so I'm not here to debate which one's better or if you should do it or not. I think they're 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 good systems to collect for. Um, the Retron 5, which uh, I did do some uh, basic testing for them, I, I think it's a solid system. Uh, the reason why is for the money you have, you can start collecting for multiple different systems all in one shot. Yes. Is it emul emulation? Yes. Do I still, still think it's worth it? Yes. Is it the best hardware in the universe? No. Is it a good place to start? Yes. And so um, I, I think this is a this is a solid investment. Um, I you know the other thing too that a lot of people don't know is this works with a power based converter. You can actually play Master System games on this. I mean, for the amount of systems that you can play all in one shot, and it looks gorgeous on a new TV, which is another discussion. Many of the systems I showed here work best on a classic TV. That might not be an option for everybody. Maybe you just have a, a, a modern TV. The truth be told, some of these systems on don't look the greatest on, on a new HD TV. This looks amazing on an HD TV, and so it's built for that. And so, um, just my recommendations. Um, are there other great systems to clock for? Absolutely. But, but these are just a place to start. They're more common systems. They're not going to break the bank as much. You're going to find them. You're going to be the, the part of the challenge too. And I'm kind of at this point now where the stuff I'm pursuing is nowhere to be found even online. And so it's like a waiting game of like <laughs> hoping someone shows up with stuff that, that you don't, that you don't have or, you know, and it's just, it's just not as fun. And so, um, you know, I, I'm thankful for everything I have, and and I'm I, I, I love collecting this collecting this hobby and stuff. And so, um, there are other systems to collect. They're not they're not as easy to collect for or cheap. And so, comment below what systems do you collect for? Um, these are the ones I recommend uh, people to start out with, or or if they're just beginning. And uh, and thank you for for all the subscribers. Um, I, I do have a patron as well. Uh, many of the things I showcase in my collection, uh, I don't get a discount. I just go out and buy. Um, I have a limited budget. Um, I look forward to doing many, many new videos in the future, and, and thank you for all the support.